Hello everyone. So today, let us take a look at Crow or the Cube Resource Orchestrator. This is a new experimental open source project from AWS. And what Crow aims to do is to make it simpler to orchestrate multiple Kubernetes resources. We have always had a need to do this because most of the applications that we deploy are usually deployed as a combination of multiple other resources. We have deployments, services, ingresses, and any other Kubernetes objects that might be required to be deployed along with the application. And of course, since this happens regularly in our workflow, there has always been a need to make this process easier, repeatable, and reusable. And several solutions already exist to help us do just this. For example, you can create your own API services and your own custom resource definitions. And frameworks like Crossplane also exist that create abstractions that enable orchestration of applications in Kubernetes. But up to now, both of these two solutions have always been a little bit complex. It's not easy to get started or to set up and maintain these solutions. And this is the problem that Crow aims to solve. So Crow provides a powerful abstraction layer and it handles all of the dependency and configuration ordering of your resources. So this means that it will intuitively know what order your resources need to be deployed in and what resources depend on what other resources. And then it creates and manages the entire life cycle of all of these resources. And the selling point is that it manages to do all of this in a much more simplified way. It is easy to get started. It uses Kubernetes custom resource definitions as templates. So there's no need to struggle with any complex open API schemas. So let's try it out today. We're going to get Crow installed in a Kubernetes cluster and then try to simplify our logging pipeline with Crow. So imagine that as part of your deployment process for your applications, you also define some extra manifests or resources that provision a logging pipeline for the application. So let's say we're using FluentBit, for example, for log collection. So in order to get an application's logs collected, processed, and shipped off to a logging backend, the platform team creates manifests with the other resources, like say your Fluent Bit CRDs, which then have to be added by the developers to their application's definition. And this could be a Helm chart, Customize, or any other tool that they're using for application definition. Your log aggregation system might look something like this. You'd have a log collection agent like FluentBit, uh, which is responsible for collecting the logs, doing some extra processing, and then shipping these logs off to a logging backend like Loki, which can help you store these logs. And then you'd have a front end like Grafana, which can just help you uh, query these logs and visualize the logs. Now, in order to get your application enabled for log collection, you can create a cluster input, which is a fluent bit custom resource definition. Yeah, so with this cluster input, I'm basically describing a cluster input for an analytics application that is running in the analytics namespace. So here I'm defining the input plugin that FluentBit is going to use in order to collect these logs. So there are several plugins that can be used, but here we're using the tail plugin, which basically reads the logs off of the Kubernetes node. Some important information to take note here is path or the storage location for the logs of this particular pod and in this particular namespace. So we use this particular naming convention, which has the namespace name followed by the name of the pod. So now the logs are going to be ingested by the fluent bit agent that is running on all the nodes in your cluster. Now, in order to get these logs, of course, stored into a logging backend, we create another object that's called a cluster output. So you can define where you want your logs to be exported to. So this could be in S3 storage, could be open search or elastic search. Yeah, but in our case, we're going to be using Loki, another logging backend. So we just define the host of where Loki is running, uh, the port, and in order to identify which logs belong to which application, we can set some labels, uh, which are basically identifiers for the logs. And this is useful when we are able to look at the logs later in Grafana. So the match statement is basically matching the tag that we defined earlier in the cluster input. So these particular logs for this particular container are tagged with a particular tag and this is the tag that the output itself is going to be matching 
in order to create a full pipeline where we have uh, logs being ingested in an input and being exported from a fluent bit output. And then you can also take a look at our analytics application, which is just a single pod here, and it is outputting some logs that we would like to collect and send over to our logging backend. So you can go ahead and apply the fluent bit cluster inputs as well as the fluent bit cluster output so that you can see exactly what happens when we set up our logging pipeline. So just to make sure that everything is working and that our logging pipeline is ingesting and exporting the logs for our analytics application, we can just do a port forward to our Grafana service and just go over there and see if the logs are being ingested into our logging backend. So we can query the logs using the label that we attach to the output. So we can see that we have some logs coming in. So our logging pipeline is up and running. So this means that the developers have to deal with and maintain all of these extra manifests in their Helm charts. And this is going to be tedious and the likelihood of deployment errors also increases. So to simplify this, the platform team can combine all the Fluent Bit CRDs and any other Kubernetes resources that are required into what is called a resource graph definition. So this essentially reduces the entire logs pipeline deployment into a single manifest. So we want to simplify this entire process of provisioning a logging pipeline. So what we want to do is combine all of the different Kubernetes resources that are required to do this into a single resource graph definition using Crow. So we can just go ahead and clean up uh, the cluster output and the cluster inputs we created. So obviously we're going to need to install Crow. And then we're also going to install all the other custom resource definitions that come along with Crow. So it is very simple to install Crow. You just need Helm and you can go ahead and just use this command to install Crow. So if I just list the pods in the Crow namespace, you can see that the Crow pod is up and running and everything is ready to go. We can also look at the custom resource definitions that have been installed along with Crow. So you can see we have this important one, which is called resource graph definitions, which is uh, what we're going to be using to compose all of our different resources into a single custom resource definition. So this is what a resource graph definition looks like. So here I'm creating a resource graph definition called uh, the logs pipeline. So under the spec, I'm basically describing the schema or how I want this resource to be configured. Basically, this is what the YAML file to create a logs pipeline is going to look like. So I have basically the API version, and then I have the kind, the name of the resource that I'm going to be creating. So I'm going to name it logs pipeline. And then under spec, we have some values that we expect to be supplied by the person that is creating an instance of this uh, resource graph definition. So you can set a name and a namespace for this resource. And then I can, and then below here, I'm setting plugins. Uh, what fluent bit plugins do I need to be used for this particular logs pipeline? So you can specify an input plugin, like the tail plugin, for example, and then you can also uh, specify the output plugin like Loki or any other output plugin that you have available to you. You can also set some defaults if no values are supplied by the person that's creating this custom resource. Some defaults can also be used. So under resources here is where we actually define all of the other resources that are going to be created when we create this single logs pipeline. So first we can define the first resource and this is going to be a cluster input that uses the tail plugin. And then the include when uh, statement basically sets a condition when we would like this object to be created when you create this logs pipeline CRD. So if we set our input plugin to tail, then this particular template will be deployed. Template is basically the fluent bit cluster input, just as we saw earlier. So, so once again, this is the simplicity of Crow. All we have to do is just put the entire manifest file under the template, and then we can customize some values that we need to change on a case by case basis. This is a cluster input from fluent bit, just like we saw earlier. So of course we want to customize the name. So we're going to get that from the schema spec name. So here the, under the schema, we have uh, the name, the namespace and plugins. So these values are the ones that we're going to be plugging into the resources to customize the instances of uh, this logs pipeline CRD. So in the configuration of the tail plugin, the tag is going to be a combination of the namespace and the name. 
and then of course the path to where the logs are contained like we saw earlier take the namespace name and the name as well of the pod and all of these values can be customized on a case by case basis but we shall leave uh, whatever is remaining here as the default configuration and likewise like the we did with the cluster input the cluster output can also be configured in the same way then you can just go ahead and set some values this particular cluster output will be used if we set our output plugin to loki and then the match statement is also populated with variables and then for the labels that is going to uh, uniquely identify these particular logs as being from this particular pod in this particular namespace we can set a label with the job being equal to a combination of the namespace and the name. And then finally here I have a cluster output exporting the logs to standard out. And this particular cluster output will be deployed only if the output plugin has been set to STD out. So we can go ahead and apply this resource graph definition to our cluster. And then we can describe the resource graph definition just to make sure that everything has been configured correctly and that the status is okay. Yeah, so if you have configured everything correctly, you don't have any errors or syntax errors. So under status here, you should also not see any errors. So everything is active. So our resource graph definition of logs pipeline has been successfully created. So if I check the custom resource definitions, I should see that I have a new custom resource definition created. So this is a logs pipeline CRD that I can now use to create a logs pipeline. So now all the heavy lifting has been done in the resource resource graph definition we have defined all the resources that we need to be deployed as part of our logs pipeline creating a new logs pipeline for an application is just as simple as defining a manifest like this so here i have the kind of logs pipeline and then the api version is crow so i'm just giving some details about how i want this logs pipeline to be configured and remember, we did this in the schema of the resource graph definition. The name of the application is analytics. The namespace of the application is also analytics. And then I'm using an output plugin of Loki. I'm not defining an input plugin because the default is tail. Yeah, so now we can go ahead and create our instance of a logs pipeline. So I can just apply this instance and I should go ahead and create a new instance of logs pipeline. So we can now go ahead and describe the newly created logs pipeline. So you can see that everything has been deployed correctly. So the name of this logs pipeline is called analytics. And we have some crow labels here that show that this particular object or resource is uh, managed by crow. Then we have some usual information like the kind, the metadata, and then the spec here, it we have the input plugin as set to tail and then our output plugin is loki yeah and then the status of this logs pipeline is true it is active it successfully reconciled so everything should be working fine so now we can also check for all the fluent bit resources that have been created as dependencies basically of our logs pipeline so for cluster inputs we have the tail analytics input that has been created and then for cluster outputs we have the low key analytics output that has been created let's also verify that our logs pipeline has also been created successfully and that is actually inputting and exporting logs so if i move over to grafana you can see that we have uh, logs coming in from the new logs pipeline that we created yeah so this is obviously going to make the process of uh, orchestrating multiple kubernetes resources much more simpler and this also helps in separating concerns like for example this particular resource graph definition for log aggregation or any other kind of observability resource can be managed by the platform team so application owners and developers don't have to bother with uh, exactly how all of this logs pipeline is configured all they have to do is basically create an instance of the logs pipeline and just set a few values and they can enable logs for their application. So this manifest can also in fact be included as a dependency in the application team's own resource graph definition for their application. This can also be added to their own resource graph definition because uh, they are probably also using this same process to define their own application's dependencies. For example, this analytics application has a config map that configures the application 
application as well as the deployment that deploys the application. So you could simply add an observability section and then you can set a logs enabled field. So developers can set this field to true in case they want to enable log collection for their application. And then they can also specify what plugins they want to use. And then as one of their resources, they can add a logs pipeline resource, which of course uses the template of the logs pipeline that has been created by the platform team. So the first signs are good. This really looks like a very useful project with lots of potential new applications. It's still an experimental project though, so it is likely to undergo much more change and evolution over the next few months, but I'm definitely going to be testing it some more and I encourage you to do the same. Uh, check out the project. And once again, thank you all for watching. If you find this video useful in any way, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.